Should we change her look? Because apparently I don't have teal hair, hair anymore, so I guess I guess we're making it red or something. Mm, what do I like? Oh well, yeah, because I have I have all the hairstyles and clothes unlocked because of the HIO version. Because I'm a Patreon. What could we take? I don't know. It's it's a bit too red right now, though. Let me take brown. Uh, but I like my. I, I guess you know what we go. He he, gray went, uh, blonde. So why won't we? How about that? Oh, blonde and blue. Interesting. I don't know. Hmm. Oh no. I really don't know which one to pick. I mean, maybe this one then. Who cares? Yeah, this one, let's just go with this one. I don't know. Yep. Um. Yeah, anyway, um, welcome to Commentary. I am Ari, and we are playing Taylor Tales again, um, chapter 8. And I have high, high hopes for this one, because, as I already suspected, wait, this is a CG chapter. I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you, I guess. But I, for one, am looking very much forward to. Having a nice CG with Grey. So let's see, that's probably about... Wait, where is that combat music or like stress music? I wasn't stressed, like, I was just about to say like, oh, it's probably about the date. I was, going, I was just going into like hype mode for like cute stuff and what the hell is this now? Wait, will there be a real intruder? And also like, didn't Sarah want to stay over? Like how... I guess we're just a few days in the future. Whatever, okay, I'm, I'm getting into the scene, I'm sorry. Um, as I'm trying to fall asleep, something happened. <laughs> oh my god, that actually scared me. That was really abrupt. A thundering crash rings out from somewhere in the building, and then the sound of glass being smashed. Wait, did Grey do something to get like the wrath of someone, and now like I get the retribution for it? Maybe he should stay guard, not Sarah. Anyway, I jump out out of bed, now wide awake, my heart racing as I follow the sounds of shouts and the thought that follows. Wait, did they actually try to attack Grey? I rush to the living room where Sarah is sleeping. Oh, so she is uh, staying over. She's already up and confused. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Sarah asks, blinking sleepily through the dark. I think someone's breaking in! And yell, I'm yell, I yell in return. Sprinting down the stairs together, we crash into the hall. Uh, we crash out into the hallway and look around wildly for the source of the commotion. What I see next makes my heart drop. The back door of the boutique is flung wide open. The shadowy figures within not even attempting to hide their presence. I know that uh, the smart thing to do would be to call the police and find somewhere to somewhere uh, to wait. But the only thing I can think of is the boutique. All my work, my entire life, is right through that door. Without thinking, I push through the door and immediately notice Grey's pale head, head of hair and Jet's hulking form as they wrestle another man to the ground. Flipping on a light switch, the men blink against the light as they pin the guy down and snap towards me, but my focus is no longer on them. The boutique is trashed. One of the curtains has been torn and an accessory display has been knocked over. The glass shoveling... Uh, wait, the glass shelving laying smashed all over the floor. My heart sinks, Seem, uh, seeing the mess. What on earth happened here? <gasps> what the hell is going on? Sarah demands before I can speak. My attention zeroes in on the three men on the ground, one of whom I don't recognize, my blood igniting beneath my skin. Grey jumps to his feet immediately, his hand held out in front of him and his eyes wild. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Ari. This is my fault. I should have made sure he didn't drink so much. Hmm. 
I see him out. Jed hoists the drunken man to his feet without even breaking a sweat and ushers him towards the back door. Uh. I'll get the door. Sarah fo follows behind them, helping Jed get the guy out of the building. He will pay for that, alright? One of you will pay for this. <sighs> I watch them go before turning back to Grey, noticing the small scrape hidden beneath, beneath his hair on his forehead. He got hurt. The sight of his injury slowly, slowly diminishes my anger. Sit down. He does, as I asked, talking, uh, taking a small stool from behind the counter and sitting down, his head bowed, uh, bowed guiltily. We haven't talked since our last ar argument, and I'd be lying if I said the air between us wasn't uncomfortable. But if I'm being honest, I've had enough of the tension. I find my first aid kit and pull out a couple of supplies. Ripping open an antiseptic wipe and leaning in towards him, his knees on either th side of me. Uh. I really am sorry, you know, he says quietly, hissing when the alcohol from the wipe hits his wound. <laughs> Things weren't supposed to get out so out of control. I believe you. The damage to the boutique de de devastates me, but at least nothing was stolen. But this ha can't happen again, Grey. I trusted you when I let you rent out the basement. I move his hand to hold the wipe to his forehead, the fabric staining red and the cut continues to bleed. I grab a small set of bandages to hold the wound together. Mm. It won't happen again. He watches me as I patch him up. From now on, I'll ban the guys from drinking, drinking while they're here. I nod solemnly, and he mo moves his hand when I lean in to place the bandage over the cat cut, his warm, his warm breath tickling my face. My skin tingles when he, where his eyes linger, my heart beating quicker and quicker as I uh, smooth the bandage down to make sure it will stay in place. Gray takes my hand and his before I can move away grasping it between his fingers. Hmm. I am so sorry, Ari, he whispers, for this and everything else. I drop my gaze between us, suddenly unable to meet his eyes. One finger slipped beneath my chin and tilt my face to his, forcing me to look at him. Ugh. Ugh, what a mess. Jed's voice, oh, he ruined the moment. Uh, booms from behind me as footsteps enter the room. I pull my hand away from Grey, stepping back quickly. Hmm. No thanks to your friend, Sarah bites out as, as she rounds uh, the counter and finds the small dustpan and brush I keep there. Hmm. Here you go, big guy. She hands them over to Jed, raising an eyebrow. Time to clean up. Oh, you don't have to. I start, but Jeb holds up... Uh, uh, Jed holds up in hand to stop me. Uh. Yeah, I do. I'm supposed to be looking after the security of this place when uh, when everyone's here. I'm sorry I haven't done a very good job of it though tonight. He looks so sad, but uh, that I can't feel help, but a little bit of sorrow. Uh, that I mm. what did I just say? That I can't feel help? He looks so sad that I can't help but feel a little bit sorry for him, even though it was my boutique that was trashed. The four of us clean up together, making quick work of it. Sarah and I pick through the accessories as the guy clean my glass, uh, putting the mer merchandise solely on the counter and out of the way. Safely, sorry. When the floor is clean of the gla uh, glass shards, Jed and Grey stand the, uh, stand the shelves back up again, inspecting the damage. Hmm. I can fix these, Jed says, holding the sh uh, shredded curtains in his hands. Or I can sew some new ones, whatever you, whatever, whichever you prefer. You know how to sew? I ask skeptically, and he nods. How did you learn? Uh. My mother taught me, he says shyly, rubbing at the back of his neck. I got into a few scraps growing up and ended up with more than a few torn clothes. Mm. She got tired of mending them, so eventually made me, <laughs> made me learn to do it myself. <laughs> Smart woman, Sarah says with a smile. I like the sound of her. Jed gives a small smile, a red flush showing on his cheeks. Oh, he likes her, they have chemistry. 
I have some spare fabric from uh, from when I made these. If you're serious about making new ones... He nods and seems to brighten at that, obvi obviously feeling guilty for what had happened. Hmm. Perfect. Would you mind if I use your sewing machine? Sure, follow me. In the middle of the night now? I locate the fabric for Jed, still dubious about the range of his sewing skills, but impressed that he's willing to give it a go. The four of us head back to the workroom and I help Jed to get, uh, get set up with the sewing machine before leaning back against one of the tables and letting out a breath. Grey comes over beside me, giving me a grim smile. Uh. Well, it looks like I'm taking you shopping for new shelves tomorrow. I have to cover the expenses. Oh, they're so forward. I really like this. They're so responsible. I mean... What what will you tell your insurance, though? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if the insurance covers it. It's okay. My insurance will cover it. I wave a dismissive hand, planning on making a claim first thing in the morning. Gray shakes his head, less than impressed with that answer. Hmm. It will be easier and a lot less painful if you let me replace it bef uh, for you. I insist. I chew on my lip as I think about it. Insurance claims can take some time to be approved, and the sooner I, pl I re can replace the shelving, the better. If he's insisting... Wait, I wanna know... What, what... Hmm. Good. This was all your fault. Fault. Um, I fold my arms over my chest and purse my hips under happily. And we need to go early, so I can open the store for appointments in the afternoon. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. I give him a serious look to tell him I'm not joking around. I have... I, I like this one more. <laughs> I, I guess he likes the fields option. I have a business to run here. And I really don't want to see that drunken idiot back here again. Hmm. Already taken care of. He pulls his phone from his pocket and starts taping, typing, a me uh, taping a message. Unless you would like to tell him yourself. <laughs> I give him a hard stare, though he simply chuckles. Hmm. Don't worry, he won't be back. I lean back I lean back against the table and give an approving nod. Good. <coughs> Ow! I look over quickly, seeing Jed cover, uh, covering his thumb with his other hand while Sarah hovers over him. Wait, I thought he was using his, using his chewing machine. How did he sew his own thumb? Oh! Oh, are you okay? She pries his hand away, looking over the small wound and tutting uh, quickly. Um. It's just a prig, Jed says, his cheeks turning red. Happens all the time. Uh. I'll get some, uh, something to fix it, Sarah uh, answers before heading for the first aid kit. Uh. That won't be necessary. It's not an injury, Jed grumbles awkwardly. <laughs> Shut up and let me fetch you a plaster. She fires back stubbornly. <laughs> oh, they're, they're kinda cute together. Jed averts his eyes from her, not wanting to argue. I watch her in silence, though she seems completely oblivious. When she returns to Jed, I glance at Grey, who gives me an equally confused look. When Sarah starts mothering over someone, I know she has a thing for them. It seems Grey is also able to pick up the vibe between them. <laughs> You would think she'd call the whole hospital just because someone pricked their finger, Grey whispers soften, uh, softly so that uh, the two can't hear. Then the two of us chuckle, turning to hide our amusement from Sarah and Jed, who each throw us a scath uh, scathing? scathing look. Our laughter subsides and I end up leaning in closer to Grey, our arms brushing against each other as we watch our best friends with interests. Interesting. And I have to admit, that this is much nicer, being on talking terms again. I wouldn't quite call us friends, but at least for now, it's just nice. I yawn loudly, sniff uh, sniffling it with the back of my hand as I blink my eyes sleepily. Grey nudges me with his shoulder. Hmm. You should get some rest, he says, rem uh, remnants of laughter still dancing in his eyes. Hmm. We'll kick everyone out and finish uh, cleaning up here. 
I don't know. After what happened tonight, I'd rather keep an eye on things myself, I say, even though sleep weighs on me heavily. Gray gives me a look, chuckling, when all I do is stare back at him sternly. <laughs> look at you. You can barely keep your eyes open. Gray teases, twirling a, a strand of my hair around his finger. Mm. He is seriously flirting with me, like the whole time right now. But he's like kind of cautious, like he's like, mm, I'm gonna see how much he lets me do. Like he can, he's he's ready to back off at any second. I think that's like that's the vibe I'm getting right now. But he he definitely wants to get in. Um, I locked um I locked the place up. I promise it will be it will be safe. I try to give him a firm look, but I'm so tired that I doubt I look very convincing. All right, fine. I say reluctantly, uh, reluctantly, too tired to try to hide the small smile that peeks out. Hmm. Sweet dreams, he grins. I pull Sarah away from Jed and we head back up to the apartment together, the two of us, quiet. Some sparks were flying. When we've returned, I face Sarah with an amused smile on my lips. So, you seem to be getting on with to be getting on with Jed, I say to her, uh, lacing my voice with as much insinuation as I can muster. So basically, so you seem to be getting it on with Jed. She makes a sound and puts out her tongue. Ugh. The mountain man? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Denial. I see. Why not? He seems nice, I say. And he knows how to sue, that's a bonus. That gives me a distasteful look, her eyes narrowed. Ugh. Don't even get me started, unless you want me to start talking about you and Grey. What? There's nothing to talk about where that's, co uh, where that's concerned. I say, a bit more defensive sounding than I'd like. <laughs> oh, I saw you when Jed and I uh, came back into the boutique, you know? Looking pretty, uh, looked pretty chummy to me. Words fail me, though before I can even struggle to string together a sentence, she asks. Mm -hmm. Have you told him who you are yet? No, I say, thinking back to the photos. And you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go to bed then. She uh, she think, sings as she skips back over to the sofa and shuffles beneath her blanket. Then she gives me a suggestive look through the dim light. Mm. I hope you dream of Grey. <laughs> she giggles and I resist the urge to pummel her, instead huffling to myself and heading towards my room to get back to, so to sleep. Grey and I are simply acquaintances, and then uh, acquaintances, and that's that. Sarah is the one who's dreaming if she thinks that anything or more will come of it. Oh, come on. We both know what this is for a game. And besides, what kind of relationship, even friendship, could be built on a lie? Yeah, that's why you should come clean. So this is not uncomfortable mm. anymore. <sighs> How about this one? I stand beside Grey and set on uh, and the set of shelves he's been suggesting, suggesting, mm, suggesting. I can't. I can't say it. Looking them over. Suggestion. I can't. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> They're pretty similar. If we can find the same and white, they will be perfect. I say, and he smiles back at me. Mm. Let's keep looking then. We stroll through Nikea. <laughs> Nikea, okay. An enormous furniture warehouse, letting ourselves get distracted by the little showroom set up here and there. The curtains that Jed had sewn for, uh, sewn for the boutique were perfect. I doubt I could have done a better job myself, much to my surprise. The only thing left to replace now is the shelving. If only we could focus for long enough to find the right one. We enter an expensive looking kitchen area and I circle the back, gr uh, the black granite, granite counter, pretending to cook with the show pots and pans while putting on a posh accent. Dinner will be ready at 6.30 precisely. Lobster Terminator, uh, Termindor, and Black Caviar, my favorite. Uh, that's not the right accent, but whatever. Gray sits himself in, uh, down in front of one of the stalls and pretends to sip from one of the teacups set up on the table, putting out his, his pinky finger and everything. 
The two of us giggle at our silly antics and move on to the area with all the bats. There are so many. Oh. There's one fancy bat that looks so soft and plush that I can't stop myself from dropping my handbag and laying back on and lay lying back on it, sinking into the feathery comforter. Oh my god. This is heaven. I sigh at the softness. Gray ends up joining me, making the mattress sink down with his extra weight extra weight. Can we stay here for the rest of the day? <laughs> Great chuckles, the mattress shaking beneath us as he does so. Oh. Why, well, I'd love to spend all day in bed with you. I remember you saying something about appoint appointments this afternoon, he says smoothly. <laughs> with a groan, I pull out one of the pillows from behind my head and hurl it at him. He laughs again as he catches us between, uh, between his hands. Oh. All I'm saying is, as your friend, I'm reminding you of your responsibilities. He adds, and I wrinkle my nose in thought. He really thinks we're friends. I look over at him, his body barely inches away from mine, and suddenly I'm reminded of last night and how close things had gotten. Hey. But if you'd rather stay in bed with me, then who am I to stop you? He wings, and my mouth drops open at the insinuation. <coughs> oh, okay, I want to do that. I want to say that. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. And what would we do in bed? I tease, playing along with him. Yeah, he did not expect that, right? His eyes widen a little, as though he hadn't expected me to be so old. Oh, you shouldn't underestimate me. But the grin that shakes onto his lips, snakes onto his lips, tells me he likes it. Oh. Oh, there's so many options, he says, a mischievous glint in his eyes. It all depends on what you like. I lay on my side, facing him, smoothing my hand over the covers between us. I can't tell he's trying to push me. Wait, I can't tell he's trying to push me, make me break and blush. But what he doesn't know is that I'm totally prepared to push him right back. So, what do you like? I asked, my lips twisting into a sly smile. Hmm. I like to take control, he says quietly, his eyes drifting down uh, down my body, all the way to the toes that curl in my shoes. Mm. I like starting slow, taking my time, drawing it out. His eyes lock on mine, challenging me to take it further. I kick off my shoes slowly, one and then the other, letting them fall over the edge of, of the bed. And then I get comfortable, laying back on the pillows and letting, letting my hairs play around me. Ray glances arouse, around us quickly, and upon seeing no one around, he pushes himself up on one elbow and leans in closer. Uh. Are you trying to get are you trying to get us into trouble? he whispers, his voice a low rasp. Maybe. I tease, running my fingers over my stomach and watching his eyes follow the trail. How much trouble can you be? Hmm. This is hardly the right time or place to find out, he grits out, his breath heavy and his eyes hard. So what you're saying is, you really don't want to stay in bed with me? I watch the muscles feather in his jaw, all too aware of his struggle. This is way too much fun. So I mean, so I just confirmed that he's actually into me, right? Like he was, he still is. Um, this is really interesting. Like, like my character is so cocky, but I like it. <laughs> Thinking he's reached his limit, I giggle qui quietly and push myself up, swinging my legs over the side of the bed. Oh, oh, what <laughs> just happened? I start to stand until an arm wraps around my waist and pulls me back down against the soft covers, and a surprise yelp escapes me. I don't remember giving you permission to leave. Gray breathes as he hovers over me, using his thumb and forefinger to tilt my chin towards him. My throat tightens and my heart thumps loudly. I grit my teeth to keep from giving away exactly how disorientated he's making me feel. Hey. You think you can push me, Ari? 
You have no idea how far I can go. So why don't you show me? I blink up at him, lacing my voice with mock sweetness and watching his nostril flare wide. If he's not going to back down, then I absolutely refuse to do it first. At least, that's what I, w I was telling myself, until someone clears their, <laughs> clears their voice loudly somewhere nearby. A clerk. That's awkward. You need help with anything in here. An unfamiliar voice startles me and I stru uh, scramble to sit upright, adjusting myself in as I stand and lock or look over to the salesperson. We're just looking, thanks, I tell her in a hurry. She gives me a knowing look before she disappears, and my cheeks flush red with embarrassment. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Grey shoulders shake with laughter and I push him pl playfully, laughing when he pulls me back down with a grim again. grin again. It takes a little while, uh, but after successfully che che mm, uh, seizing my laughter enough to untangle my untangle myself from him, he continues browsing throughout the store. Are we not? We we don't. We're just gonna forget what just happened. All right? Okay. Okay. Nobody wants to talk about this, I guess. There was there was strong chemistry. Like no, I mean, I guess it's more like. Like uh, one night stand chemistry right now, right? Like friends plus. Um, between chatting and laughing with each other, it doesn't take long before I've forgotten all about why we came here in the first place. This is the first time I've spent actual time with Grey, and I'm finding myself enjoying his company, probably much more than I should, given the current circumstances. But despite everything, he makes me smile, his laugh is infectious, and I have to admit he's easy on the eyes. Though the unfortunate thing is, no matter how hard I try to forget it, my mind always wanders back to the reason I agreed to let him rent my basement in the first place, and why he's currently in my life. So you should tell him, just make, oh my god, just clean your table, just make, you know, just, oh my god, come clean. This is so annoying. I can't stop myself from re uh, remembering that night long ago. Blue and red flashing, flashing lights, handcuffs and a knife. I swallow thickly around the lump in my throat, trailing behind them a little more and putting some distance between us. Oh. Is this the one? I stroll slowly over to where he stands, examining the shelving. That's it. Exactly the same, I say, forcing my voice to stay bright. Grey looks around, nudging my arm when he spots the sales, uh, same salesperson from earlier watching us. Mm -hmm. Let's grab a... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's grab a box and get out of here," he says, his tone amused. "I think we've o I think we've overstayed our welcome." <sighs> uh, once we've bought the sh uh, once we've bought the shelf and finally returned to Beauty Beast, Gray immediately goes to assemble it. Oh. I think we're missing a piece," Gray announces as he holds the instructions up to his nose, inspecting them thoroughly. I'd look over the pieces that are displayed out in front of us. There's more than <coughs> there's more than enough to put this, uh, this shelving together with. Mm. Yep, I'm, r I'm right as usual. We're missing this piece right here. He continues, pointing at the page. I peek over his shoulder from where he sits on the floor. His long legs bend in front of him. A small smile slips onto my face as he glances at the instructions. Hey, Gray, move your foot, would you? I say. Huh? Huh? Why would I? Oh. Oh. He grabs the missing piece from beneath his shoe, giving me a sheepish look. Mm -hmm. Here it is. We have everything we need, I say with a laugh, attempting to t uh, take the instructions from his hands. He scrawls a little and pulls them back out of reach, swatting, uh, swatting my hand away playfully. I'm in charge of building a thing. You just sit back and do what I say. Yeah, that's how you like it, huh? I sigh, reluctantly pulling my hand back as he reaches over the instructions again, talking out loud. Hmm. We need to find pieces F and G and connect them together with these screws and these little plastically, plasticky things. Just out of curiosity, have you ever built anything like this before? I ask, raising an eyebrow. Uh. Uh, no, I have not, he admits. <laughs> but I don't see why that matters. 
I didn't think so. I love prying the instructions from his fans. Just sit here and watch how a pro does it. With the rise of his eyebrow, he leans back on his hands as I command the two sides of the shelving in place. <laughs> Connect, sorry. <laughs> I just command them. I, I just say, shelf be done, and it is. <laughs> it just puts itself together <laughs> on its own. Using my small electric drill, I safely secure the screws before adding the next piece. I give Gray a few instructions to keep him from sulking, and it doesn't take long before he's helping me move the, uh, complete, uh, the completed shelving back into the position. Afterwards, I gather the accessories from the counter and rearrange them back in place neatly, ready to be sold. With the curtain fixed and the shelving put together, everything is back to normal. Gray and I both lean against the counter, admiring our work. Hey. You're pretty handy, aren't you? He glances at me sidelong, as though he expected something else entirely. I've had to be, I say with a shrug. I put this place together on my own, with some help from Sarah. Mm -hmm. There's no one else around who could have helped you. I pause to look at him, and when he gives me that lopsided grin, I know exactly what he's trying to imply. If you're asking me if I have a boyfriend, then I'm pretty sure you would have seen one coming around by now, don't you? Uh. You could have some long distance, distant thing going on for all I know, he says matter-of-factly, and I bite down the smile that threatens to escape. I don't have a boyfriend. Not that it's any of your business. <laughs> he chuckles, holding his hand up innocently. Mm. Alright, alright. I'll keep my nose out of it. Silence stretches, and now that he's brought up the topic, I find myself thinking more about it. Well, what about you? Huh? What about me? He asks, rising an eyebrow. Do you have... Um, do you have... Oh. Are you asking me if I have a girlfriend, miss? Not that it's any of your business. My cheeks heat, feeling stupid for having brought it up. I look away quickly and he only chuckles quietly. Uh. Then no, I don't. I never found anyone... well worth settling down for. An awkward silence stretches, uh, one where I debate whether I should make the next move or just keep my mouth shut. So I suppose there's no one around to mind if you take me out for dinner then, I say at last, deciding I'm not the type to keep my mouth shut after all. Gray looks at me in disbelief and for a moment I worry if, he, if he's not going to laugh. If he's going to laugh at my forwardness. I mean, he tried to take me out already. To apologize, I mean, granted. But, like, also was kind of a bit, little bit ulterior motives, probably. Um, and so it was logic, logically, for, for him to assume that I'm just not interested for reasons, right? Well, maybe without reasons, but whatever. I'm, You know what I mean. I'm just gonna read. Huh? <gasps> You're serious? Yes. Isn't that what you wanted? Hmm. Yeah, it was. I mean, it is. He turns and finally that crooked grin of his slips into place. Uh. I still want to take you out. I can't stop myself from returning his smile, even when a small sense of dread slowly worms its way into my stomach. It's a date then, I say, watching as Grey nods in agreement. Uh. Yeah, it's a date. Finally, like back as teens, he already wanted to go out with me, and now. But I should tell him. God damn it, he needs to know. I mean, he suspects, right? But he does not know the whole truth. He oh my god, I'm so I'm, I'm so angry about this. I will not survive this route because I, on the other on, on one side I really really like it, on the other side I hate like her keeping this as a secret. I mean, maybe maybe we will re 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 hmm. maybe we will revisit this like when they fixed it, like when it's coming out. I, I I will see, maybe. I just hope that it will be better than this, because like, <sighs> it's really annoying. She should just tell him. But I don't think they will do big edits, right? So like, it will still be the case, probably. We'll see. Well, anyway, this is the end of the episode. Um, I'm happy that you joined me. You will see the next episode, like, soon. Probably tomorrow, but like, could be a bit more days, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna say you bye and uh, see you next time in chapter 9.